Secretary of DAP, and it's my privilege to host the World Duchenne Awareness Day 2022 on behalf of DART. This year, the theme of World Duchenne Awareness Day, WDAD, is Women in Duchenne, or we could say the Wonder Women in Duchenne. All over the world, women are playing such an important role in the Duchenne field, be it research, care, or advocacy. Today, we would like to celebrate that by highlighting their work and impact they have had on DART since its inception in 2012. A warm welcome to all of you to the World Duchenne Awareness Day, WDAD for short. Yes, we are not leaving the dads out of this though. We have with us the president and founder of DART, Mr. Ravdeep Singh Anand, who is the driving force behind DART, along with Karanvi Singh Anand, the catalyst behind DART. Now I would like to hand over the screen to both of them. Thanks, yeah. Mohan. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Uh, wonderful day today. Uh, we are observing World Duchenne Awareness Day. We do this every year. Uh, earlier, we used to have some uh, lovely get-togethers. Uh, times are a little different now, but hope that we are all getting back to some sort of normalcy. Now, um, this year's theme is basically, we are just saying it, the Wonder Woman of Dushen. But every year, that's what we do. We, we thank them, we acknowledge them. We may not say it in so many words, but uh, uh, it's, it's, it's their strength and their support uh, that help us uh, do what we have to do, get out there. So uh, without uh, wasting too much time, um, there, are, there are women who are uh, in different facets of DART, who are helping out DART in different ways. So um, I like to just go uh, in, in a sequential manner. Um, so basically DART being an NGO um, with a focus on research. So it would be unfair if we don't uh, first, acknowledge uh, the, 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 the great uh, women we have in our research team, Kirti, Deepika, Animic. Uh, thank you all. You guys are doing a great job. Um, yes, I do uh, lose it from time to time. Um, but it's only that because I feel so close to you guys. You guys are uh, really working very, very hard. We've got one thing going, the other thing going, and now hopefully very soon, uh, all that you guys have been working on for the last uh, couple of years should start bearing fruit. I can see that you guys are quite close. Yes, we are all anxious. Research is very difficult. Um, I don't know about my wife, but I'm growing older. And uh, so my level of patience is actually uh, reducing. So that's why I tend to stay away from you guys. But thank you so much. Um, very soon, we'll be back with Animic, uh, letting her do what she does best, validating all your work. And I'm sure wonderful things are yet to come. Without uh, guidance, without support from the clinicians, uh, we wouldn't get, because manage, get where we are today. Management is very important. Uh, Dr. Shefali, Dr. Madhulika, Dr. Menakshi, Dr. Ann Matthew, and so many more that, you know, if I start taking names, it'll be a long list. Th these are just few of the uh, uh, clinicians who have guided us, supported us, um, and uh, held our hand along the way. Um, helped us make sure that, you know, we keep moving. We keep uh, uh, innovating ourselves um, and seeing how we can uh, make things better for uh, our families, our kids. It would be unfair if I don't mention Manjula Madam in our office. She runs a tight ship. Ask her for 10 rupees to do something and she will try to make sure that, you know, we can do it in five. And that too after a couple of months. Yeah, so, but it's been her, uh, her, her passion to make sure that uh, uh, we, we work uh, in a cost-effective way, um, we save time, 
uh, we do the right things and uh, thank you manju for being there with us now uh, we have to have to have to uh, uh, put this in perspective the women in our lives what i mean is uh, in our families our mothers our wives or oh, sorry wife and uh, no no i'm just talking about my sister and uh, our daughters um, they are they are a pillar of strength um, if it comes down to anything uh, they 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 will dish out the last penny they have or the last ounce of uh, strength uh, they have to make sure that uh, you know they can help us um uh, I don't know how to say this, but I have to say it, so I'll just say it anyway. Uh, to my wife and all my uh, all all my friends' uh, wives, thank you so much. I know what it takes uh, to manage uh, uh, our heroes at home. Uh, make sure that they go to school, they all their psychological, physical needs, while we go out. Uh, try to earn try to do some research try to get some treatment some solace for our families battered and bruised we come back and uh, at night uh, our wives have to put on a, a brave face put that healing balm on us next morning put on the armor on us and send us again so we may go out it's it's really wonderful that uh, we have such support and i think it's because of these uh, these uh, these lovely women uh in our lives that we uh we can do what we do and uh, i feel um, that that it's going to be a decade since we started that uh, that's i would like to give everybody in that a big hand a big round of applause and uh, so i i i wish everybody at that uh, uh to keep working keep uh, keep the smile on Uh, it's difficult <clears throat> but uh, we have done a lot and uh, thank you so much moving on over to you mo karan please uh, thank you thank you mr anand karan would uh, like to say something yeah yeah hey everybody i'm karan we the catalyst behind dart and today i would want to dedicate this day to all the women in my life who have supported me in all my endeavors and also today as master muscle i would like to launch an article that was that was made on us and about dart and about the research that dart is doing and over to you berti <laughs> thank you karan yes that's me handling the show today <laughs> we are so used to berti doing it yes anyway thank you karan <laughs> yes. i would like to welcome the keynote speaker professor shifali gulati she is a dm in pediatric neurology program and fac faculty ic center of excellence and advanced research for childhood neurodevelopment disorders She is also the chief of child neurology division, Department of Pediatrics, AIMS, New Delhi. Professor Shifali is the proud recipient of the National Award for Outstanding Efforts in Science and Technology Communication in the year of February twenty twenty one. Her areas of specialization are Duchenne muscular dystrophy, neuromuscular disorders, and autism spectrum disorders. She also has hundreds of publications in her name. over to you professor good morning good morning everybody and uh, thank uh, mr anand and uh, the loving family of mr anand and uh, dr shastri for having invited me here i'm really privileged and honored to be amongst you karanveer hi i've never met you today meeting you virtually first time i have all the senior photographs of your graduation you have amazing parents and amazing support uh, i think uh, i'll just uh, what i wanted to tell i was most of the things many things people know i just uh, wanted to say that as we understand that duchenne muscle dystrophy is one of the commonest of the rare diseases what we have and uh, although mo mostly manifested are females you know and the most important thing what we have to understand is we have to increase awareness so that there is a 
detection and a proper detection. When you have a family with two such affected any conditions, here we're talking about Rushi, it's a failure of the entire medical fraternity. So I think it is very important to understand that we can, uh, we have to have a PMD gene uh, is the largest gene with 79 exons and there's so many mutations. We have to have a diagnosis in place. And uh, obviously when you go to the clinician, they are going to tell you whether if initially we always are doing an MLPA if required, then you go for the whole exome if you're not able to pick up so that you have a diagnosis in the child so that you can do a, a prenatal diagnosis in the next pregnancy. There is nothing, I mean, one has to understand that this is important if one family is there. Because if one child is affected, that child is suffering, family is suffering. So we have to ensure that we are able to take the stand when we are planning the next pregnancy. So this is in place. And the diagnosis, you know, many times people just go on getting many tests done. So we do not need many other tests. Only in certain situations when you can't clear from the DMT, uh, from the genetic thing, then we go ahead and take a help of muscle biopsies. Dr. Gayatri uh, will... Um, knows and will share that although because when genetics was not that much available we were doing too many muscle biopsies earlier now with the genetics coming up the my muscle biopsy time the number of muscle biopsies we're doing are going down coming to the management what is happening is we have to understand that it has to be a child has to be holistically seen firstly the child is a, a child so the all the nutrition growth development you know emotionals need everything of the child has to be taken care of they're just not focused on it, only on the dystrophin part and uh, you know that has to be seen and in along with the dmd part we have for the dmd thing there is one thing is a problem because of the dystrophin deficiency and there is also a problem which is coming because of the the radical damage and inflammation and all so there are new therapeutic options which are coming for addressing both of them but right now, what is the standard of care globally available should be at least followed while we are chasing our dreams and hope to have all the other treatments available. So point is, we have to understand that any child who is there, you have to get that regular the OTPT thing has to go on, the respiratory exercise has to go on, you have to get the orthopedician to see when it is required, you have to have the endocrinologist to see, you have to have a respiratory thing, you have to have a spirometry done frequently, you have to, uh, as per the guidelines, the proper guidelines and, you know, cardiac evaluation, you may need initially, annually and later on, maybe more frequently. The point is, we have to look at those things and the standard of care for all machines is as of now, corticosteroids which many doctors also are scared in starting and parents are more scared anyway because they have fear for side effects. One is to understand that the corticosteroids, whether we have penicillin or tepnesacol, tepnesacol has less side effects, but they are not just placebo. They are just not given, you know, just like that. There is a definite evidence that it helps in preventing the ongoing damage so that the child is able to walk for more years. It is shown that it is going to make more ambulation time and and the earlier we start is better. Earlier they used to wait till, you know, after five years and all. It is shown in studies that the earlier you start is better. There are different dosages and all were being given. Inter even intermittent was tried. But as of now, it is that you have to give daily and it has to be given till the child becomes non-ambulatory a particular dose. And after the child becomes non-ambulatory, still we give steroids at a lower dose because it is not only affecting the muscles of the hands, it is not only voluntary muscle. It is affecting for the respiratory muscle, cardiac muscle, bladder muscle, gastrointestinal muscle. So that is why we have to keep in mind of keeping the, uh, you know, we have to keep on continuing to give steroids. We have to monitor it for the side effects. Everything has side effects. We have to ensure the nutritional part of it. The child should not be excessively gaining weight because the child is going to be weaker after some time. So you have to, the child, ha and, and uh, he has to be able to stand and have enough strength to stand. And later on when he, uh, you know, so you need so that the weight gain is not there. So we have to understand that steroids have to be given. Before starting steroids, we always like to give the vaccination. We like to give the varicella, influenza vaccination and pneumococcal vaccination because we want to prevent any chest infections which can be prevented. Like you and me have, if we get infected, we are, we are better off, you know. But these children who are already having compromised muscles or the even respiratory and also it's better to prevent what we can. So that has to be kept in mind. And we do not 
we do not uh, you know we ignore many other things like you may have sleep related disordered breathing in many of them you may have obstructive sleep apnea at night in two third of them you may have vascular problems you may have upper gi problems bladder problems we have seen these were there in as many as 27% of patients 70% uh, are cognitively preserved 30% may have little bit cognitive impairment but we have to understand that you know as many as 23 to 25% may have hyperactivity you may have 40% may have behavioral problems and 51% may have feeling low depression so you have to think holistically for the child not only the muscle you have to think about that and we have to understand that the uh, besides this uh, you know holistic care and the standard of care with steroids and following up for all the systems which are going to be involved potentially so we have to i think and move ahead and coming to the newer therapies the newer therapies as of now as of now stem cell is a total is is, is not anywhere near you just have there a lot of research going on a lot of things going on but you know you have induced pluripotent stem cells being formed but then what happens is when the stem cells are there you have to have some editing genome editing has to take place so it is long way from actually being taking place only currently in usa there is a vta 11 which is fda approved for trials which is going on which is a stem cell in which you have induced pluripotent stem cells and a genetic uh, editing has been done but otherwise you know when you have round the corners you have stem cell centers uh, sort of claiming to be magical we should not go ahead see hope is there but scientific evidence has to be kept in mind as of today in the newer therapies which is there one is the nonsense mutation one having a atelurin which is there which is there which bypasses the nonsense mutation and what happens is because as you all have already read so much you must be knowing so much about dmd you must have read from the net so much so you have different mutations which are causing so when you have a mutation which is causing a frame shift mutation and the opposing ends left after the deletion and all are not going to be able to fully make a partial dystrophin also then you end up having dmd how can we circumvent that if there is a nonsense mutation in which a full stop is there so this atelurin drug is bypassing the full stop which is there the stop codon is being bypassed so there is a this was approved in european union and it is being a trial is just completed globally india was part of it and we also have 11 patients part of it and they are continuing on the humanitarian access program of after being on the trial that has shown some improvement in the motor function of these children uh, you know eventually now coming to the main thing what is happening is the ex, uh, you have this deletions and based on the deletions they are currently three categories of drugs uh, three categories uh, of you know pair, uh, mutations which are there you know you have exon 51 most commonly mostly studied in detail for lots of years then you have 53 and then you have 45 it does not mean that those three are deleted dr arun shastri has already developed a table and you know you have tables even globally in which the set of mutations which are amenable to to these skippings what happens if there is a deletion so this antisense oligonucleotide is going to is just bypassing crudely it is just bypassing the thing that they, the deletion and is allowing the you know partially of uh, uh, functional uh, dystrophin to be produced so this principle ultimately will be plausible in many more many more deletions it's the principle is going to be there as of now available for 45 51 and 53 you know but the modifications of this antisense oligonucleotides can give one future uh, to many many more deletions why it is important for parents to understand when you get the genetic testing done talk to your pediatric neurologist understand whether it is amenable as of now to these available drugs because why i am saying is i have had parents who have been coming for the court cases you know those high court court cases patients i we were to review all of them so when we reviewed i had two patients who were just running around from pillar to post and their children was not amenable to the their treatment so i think this is important for the awareness that currently this one is available for definitive and i think one more fact is important to understand sometimes parents expect magical cures you know the point is we, what is the status right now the evidence in exon 51 skipping they, that's the maximum evidence and they have shown that children who are walking uh, in a 6 minute walk test more than 300 meters are going to have a reduced progression of disease their progression will not stop it is a reduced progression of disease definitely that has been shown and even in those non ambulatory a better respiratory and cardiac function and in exon 53 they have just shown that the dystrophin expression improves 
and exon 45 is only shown safety so there is lot of research being done and i think dart is doing a wonderful job and that is the need of the r to have research going on in our country to develop indigenous products as of now if you take the take the cost involved so it cost involved if you see for a 30 kg child see all these exon skippings are weekly intravenous infusions the atelurin is a daily drug orally so when we saw we calculated the cost it's around 8 crore per year for atelurin annually for a, a, a 30 kg child for exon skippings roughly coming around 6 to 8.5 crores per year those costs are too huge so how to do it the you know the need of the r is research in india indigenously and i think dart has way ahead and is on the right track and i think this is very important to understand but i uh, one thing is very important currently regarding financial advocacy we all should know that government has a rare disease policy but they have increased the ceiling of you know in uh, dmd comes in the three third uh, third category in which it's amenable to crowd funding because the cost the human gas they have anyway identified 50 lakhs per patient so we have asked them whether you know we can have this the wheelchairs the motorized wheelchairs you can have those uh, you know ventilators and all that you know so they'll be discussing and all those supportive things to be required for even the vaccinations because you know because it may become expensive for some patients so all of them the whole supportive care is there they said they will be uh, you know discussing we've had a whole series of 20 webinars uh, because of uh, research grant from Um, financial advocacy research grant from global genes usa and we just finished them yesterday and we have discussed on various aspects and we have asked and we have also tried to work up about the crowd funding had the parents aware that how the crowd funding on the private platforms are there then humanitarian access programs which are available but we need to have some long term sustainable goals and financial uh, stability and the mostly it will be if it is indigenously produced with their you know, the finances are okay so that will be very important and so the research which is going on is important and i would be uh, sharing uh, all the the webinars which we had are uh, related to dmd and sma uh, focusing on that so i'll share with uh, uh, mr anand then they can share with you because they're all live stream on youtube they uh, will put it in one qr code so that it is there and we try to bring in out then uh, you know the pub publication and all so that we can ensure we can do some advocacy for that before i end just wanted to un mention one thing today uh, you are honoring and re regarding the women in lives but let me tell you out of the these have been names and i have noticed something very bad happening many times the women are left with the dmd children being an exling and all you know you, uh, and many other things and even otherwise non exling ones also you know mothers are just blamed for any problem in the child i think and many mere mothers are asked to leave the job and look after the child i think you have to take as a family responsibility it should not be put on the women and the women should not be blamed for anything and you know you have to understand that it is not anybody's fault it is not anybody's fault that it has happened to your child you know you can't blame each other for that and other thing is we had la last section last yesterday when we completed i got the session i felt was family counseling and coping strategies everybody may you know ultimately what happens is when a child is born if a typically developing child with a problems you have to put the maximum effort when the child is newborn in a, in a toddler but for a child with special needs especially with dmd and all the need the support the child will need in advancing years is going to be more and parents bodies are going to be older frail fragile you know and as mr anand was saying you know one becomes you know it becomes difficult the threshold and the stress handling capacity decreases so i think we need to have you know parent support groups make a lot of benefit and uh, you know uh, support but i was just thinking you know i've been thinking for long and i've been advocating for a autism patients and all we don't have respite centers in india it's all we're putting in policies you know it is difficult but can we not have two people in the similar city in same city become buddies suppose see, you know if i have to go if suppose i if some one person has to go one family is busy both the parents working and you don't have a support then the other family may pitch and you can leave your child there so you know if you don't have respite centers can't we have buddies you know parent support groups also will have to make respite centers finances in always a big problem can't we share the responsibility in a loving way that will be there and one thing is there we don't have to give coping strategies once one is depressed one has to give handle empower the parents from the beginning the 
coping strategies so that one is not depressed and we have to have you know transitional care when these children are growing from pediatric neurologists from adolescents to adults a definite program for pre you know for going sending out to adult neurologists that's a transitional care should be formalized and those who are unfortunately becoming pre terminal i mean we have to face it the palliative care has to go on besides this a uh, medical condition any medical condition can be a disability because of the environment whether it's physical environment you can't use the wheelchairs up and down and no accessible toilets and other is attitude of the people attitude of the people if the other person around you looks at you in a very demeaning way it just breaks your heart so i think we have to destigmatize this is very important and looking at the humanistic aspect other people who don't have children who are having any problems they think it's not me and they do not understand i think empathization and humanistic attitude is important and whenever the life says give up hope this was tried one more time but hope cannot bypass scientific endeavor and evidence we have hope we have to move ahead but have to have scientific hope and uh, you know and we all have to work together all children parents and doctors scientists everyone even the uh, you know media and you have the government everybody has to work together and let me tell you nobody is doing a favor everybody has a fundamental right to live and have access to everything only thing we need is equity not equality you know i do not need a wheelchair but somebody may need a wheelchair so that person is equal to me in i think once you provide a good wheelchair to that person so i think it is very important to understand and you, nobody is doing anybody a favor it is everybody's fundamental right thank you so much uh, for having me over and uh, i think we all have to have to overcome all these challenges circumvent and make a good happy life for each one of us thank you thank you professor shufali it was really nice and it really is a good idea to have the buddy groups as you mentioned to share the responsibilities of the parents thank you so much apologies uh, karanveer you were so right when you said handing over the screen to bertie in my excitement i just forgot to mention the magazine that you launched bati kindly to the needful and uh, everybody can download the this from the website the link is in the chat yes and uh, if anybody wants to ask questions it will be done at the end of the program when we will open it to the public kisi ko bhi kuch sawal puchne hai to प्रोग्राम के अंतिम में जब खोलेंगे सबके लिए ये स्क्रीन तब आप पूछ सकते हैं अनफॉर्चुनेटली डॉक्टर गायत्री विल नॉट बी एबल टू ज्वाइन अस टुडे समन डियर टू हर पास्ट अवे सो शी हैड टू लीव टाउन या थैंक यू बर्थी our next speaker is dr geetika pant most welcome who is an assistant professor at the department of biotechnology and uh, genetics at the ms ramaya college of arts science and commerce she has more than 18 years of experience in the field her passion her passion is teaching and research she um, has specialized in plant physiology and molecular biology she has been awarded multiple grants to conduct students project from the karnataka state council for science and technology over to you gitika ma'am thank you so much movin a uh, very good morning to all and uh, first of all i would like to thank uh, karanveer and his dear parents for giving me this opportunity uh, to share my experience especially with the uh, cute karanveer i always call him as a cute karanveer i'll go back actually in the past in the month of august 2019 when the fresh batch of bsc biotechnology students joined ms ramaya college of arts science and commerce and actually it was a coincidence uh, that my entry to this college was also in the same year and in the same month and uh, it was i remembered it was in the orientation and you know induction program when my first interaction happened with the, him and uh, slowly uh, when i started taking classes for the first years i found that his curiosity towards the subject and i was handling cell biology and genetics that time um, it dragged the attention the way he used to ask questions and on time submission of the assignments that was the awesome part of him there were 80 students in the class in section a i still remember and uh, out of 80 he was the first 10 who submit the assignment on time and he used to come ma'am assignment with a beautiful smile 
And uh, not only this, uh, what has happened uh, during the lab sessions, I handled uh, the labs for him in cell biology, genetics. Then uh, right now I'm handling for him in the final year plant biotechnology. His all lab sessions right from the microscopy, you uh, know, to the observation of the slides and uh, the way he used to interpret the results. Very nice. Up to date, his observation book, if you see. And he used to ask, ma'am, how this will happen, how it is like this, why the color is coming blue, why the titration is pink, and how do the plants grow? This semester, I'm handing plant biotechnology for him. So we had a very nice interaction. Uh, we have taken him to the plant tissue culture lab, and uh, there all the you know in vitro grown plants were there. He has all the possible questions. So... It is like uh, you know, the curiosity what he has towards the scientific temperament, the best I can know him as his mentor. And this is a third year of interaction with him. And uh, what I like is he's still continuing with MS from our College of Art, Science and Commerce for his master. So all the best to you, Karanveer. And I'll be looking forward to see your smiling face in the corridor in my department. Uh, and any possible you know, help anytime, you're always there. And we are all teachers are there for you. And uh, last but not the least, I also want to thank Biswiji Bhaiya <laughs> at the back end, who is always there on time with him. And he's the one, you know, who interacts with the teachers and the students. We all teachers know him that, okay, when he comes means Karanveer is already there in the class. <laughs> on time uh, and yeah shadow is always there with him <laughs> so all these i'm not going to miss him uh, because he's again continuing another two years of the journey so all the best currently keep smiling always and all the best to your msc masters in biotechnology and i thank movin and mr anand thanks a lot for you know making my day uh, and best wishes to currently and all the good luck to you thank you Thank you, Dr. Geetika. Karanveer is truly blessed to have you as mentor and guide. And you are really his inspiration. Thank you. Thank and you. And so Shadow much. will never miss a moment to, you know, <laughs> drop him to college and wonder why he is going away the whole day he's not there. So, thank <laughs> thank you, so you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. I would like to welcome our next speaker, Ms. Manjubala Subramanyam, who is the principal of DPS Bangalore North. Since March 2010, she is an education management professional and a biology teacher with a demonstrated history of working in the education management industry in two countries. For her untiring work of two decades in making DPS Bangalore North inclusive to one and all, irrespective of physical abilities or background, in the year 2017, she was conferred the Prime Minister's National Award to Teacher by the Ministry of Human Resource Development, Government of India. She's also the winner of the Fulbright Award program. Not by preaching alone, but through practice, Manju Ma'am has made DPS Bangalore North a safe haven for kids with special needs. And I've had the privilege of working with her for more than a decade. Over to you, Manju Ma'am. Thank you, Movin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Anand and the entire team at DART to, uh, for inviting me to another edition of the uh, Dushin's World Day, this being WDAD. And um, um, if I and DPS Bangalore North are inclusive in as a culture, if everyone breathes inclusion on our campus, we give credit to Karanveer Anand for making that happen for us. Um, Dr. Shefali uh, spoke about all the aspects that WAD is talking about this time, that's advocacy, research, and care, and she added awareness to it. And I think um, uh, in every aspect, as a school, as whatever amount of research we could do, we were involved and in, in, and in care as well. And I'm going to share with everyone, I see there are 96 participants today, our journey into inclusion. Um, Dr. Shefali also spoke about inclusion and uh, women being included into the process and give, being given e equal opportunities. Uh, I think Karan gave us, the teaching profession at DPS Bangalore North is hugely uh, women. And for all us women, 
Karan was our teacher. Uh, and I have had the privilege of knowing many of the wonderful women in Karan's life, from his grandmothers to his mother, whom I, uh, who's a dear friend, to all his teachers and coordinators who have taught him in his schooling years, and to the girls in his class. And I think Karan has shown us a part of life that we did not know. And like I said, uh, he was our teacher. Um, Karan came to us um, as a young boy in kindergarten. And I, I say I have said this story many times over, but for those who are joining us today, I'd like to share the story again. Um, as a young boy, he was playing cricket. And as the uh, disease progressed, his movement reduced. So as a sensitive school, we, we thought we would, uh, you know, keep his class on the ground floor so that he didn't have to move around and it wasn't a problem. His classmates were extremely empathetic, were super happy to be with him in that floor, but Karan was not. As the years went by and the senior classes started moving upstairs, he came one evening and said, I don't want to be restricted in this uh, floor. I want to be with all other grades in, uh, with all other sections in my grade. And I said, Karan, what can we do? And he said, why can't we have ramps? Why can't we have elevators in the school? And the management, uh, Mr. Maksud, was so supportive that during the summer vacation, we had ramps come over and in the new buildings, we, we installed lifts. And this was much before the CBSE said that uh, institutions have to be accessible. From there, Karan moved on to a position where he had to be, uh, you know, he had to go on a wheelchair, but he was not yet ready. He still wanted to move around and he said, can we have railings on the walls that lead from my classroom to other places and to the washroom? And bang on, that happened. When he decided to sit on the wheelchair, he said, your toilets are not accessible. Can we have accessibility in the washrooms? And not only did we do that for Karan and his floor, but we did that everywhere. How does this benefit everybody? Not the word went around that there, here is a school that is inclusive. Here is a school that has its heart in its right place. And, and a family moved from Mumbai. Vishwaraj Parab's parents moved from Mumbai just hearing this story somewhere through someone. Vishwaraj today is in grade 12, doing his NIS. He, he's, he's also a Dushin muscular dystrophy case. And his brother, Hridhar Raj, is now a school counselor. He works with us. Now, that is what Karan did for us. Not only did he start, he left a legacy. Grade 11 and 12, grade 10, he was a CGPA 10. And very often people would ask Karan, Karan, uh, when other children are playing in the playground, you are in the class. And he said, I'm doing what I can do best. Academics is my strength, and I would like to bring that to the fore. And I think this, again, is a lesson that Karan taught me, that inclusion is a strengths-based approach. It is in identifying the strengths that people have and giving them the opportunity to excel in that. And Karan had plenty of friends because they all needed his help with his academics. And when they were in the sporting ground, he was doing what he would cheer them, he would record them, he would do a multiple other things. Grade 11, he wanted to do science. His mom was a little uh, apprehensive. And uh, he said, but this is where I want to go. I want to find a cure for Duchenne's and similar disorders, and I want to do science. We changed the labs to fit in his um, wheelchair. So he did physics and chemistry and biology, just like other children. Went on to be a school topper, and again proved him his excellence. Grade 12, and the year, the senior most year in class, Karan made history. He came and asked me uh, a couple of days before the elections to the prefectorial board, said, ma'am, I want to be head boy. And again, his parents felt, would he be able to take that responsibility? Would he be able to, you know, uh, take all the uh, programs that come with it? And Karan said, give me a chance. Now the story doesn't end here. There were other applicants for head boy. The minute they saw Karan's name uh, on the list for the head boy, they walked into my office and said, uh, we want to step down. And I said, why would you do that? 
is that sympathy and they said no it's not sympathy it is celebrating success and being a part of history no school in the world has ever had a boy as head boy with dushin's dushin's muscular dystrophy and we want to give karan the chance and we want to give us the chance the whole school a chance to be to be making history with him they said that and on the day of the grad, on the on the investiture ceremony day mr moven and the boys had erected a ramp on the stage which wasn't existing because we thought we will do the ceremony on the ground but it was there and so karan was wheeled in onto the um, stage the why when the students took oaths for their positions none of not, nothing was taught and again magic happened and every time i narrate the story i have goosebumps the other students knelt down to the height of the wheelchair to take their oath now this is empathy this is empathy that you've seen and felt every day in your lives and that is school culture and that is exactly what dps bangalore north learned from karan dr shifali spoke about raising awareness in the community and as a school we thought and we felt deep in our hearts that every child with special needs needs advocacy and we became advocates for those children starting with karan uh we did nukkar natak plays we walked for dushins we raised awareness in social gatherings we attended workshops and seminars that dart organized to get a better understanding of for ourselves we raised funds through crowd funding we took part in various activities that karan wanted to be in not only did we do that as a teacher of biology i taught genetics in the group that karan was a student with me and karan was my co teacher when we taught genetics that year we changed the curriculum instead of going with examples from the textbook we took dushins as our uh, as our key topic and we taught genetics around it from classical genetics to modern genetics to inheritance of diseases to therapy and treatment and the future of biotechnology dushins became the part and it was so experiential because karan could bring in his story and his narrative and his treatment into the classroom and dart allowed for our children to go into their lab to see technology whether it was pcr or gene editing or exon skipping what was in the textbook turned to be real life experience there are stories that i can narrate and narrate and narrate about karan and the anands and dart um and how they've changed dps bangalore north um my uh, my being here is to tell every school that you can be the only thing that you need to have is an open heart that is welcoming of all children and accepting them for their strengths and working around did we spend a lot of money doing this no we didn't things happened because the community chipped in dart chipped in others chipped in and things just rolled on and the accommodations and the exemptions that governments give become a part of the learning so uh, my only take is open your hearts embrace the diversity that exists in our children support them dr shifali also spoke about the social and emotional well being and the mental well being of children of all children including children with dyslexia and i think that kind of support that the teachers and the school give uh, the child and the parents makes a huge difference movin came in as a parent who was escorting her child went on to become a favorite teacher so all the years that karan was in school she was with him taking care of him and taking care of 8000 other children and this is what can happen when the parent school community decides to work together each can it turns into a symbiotic relationship um i think i've um, spoken about most of the things i wanted to do and thank you for making the women at dps bangalore north so empowered because of their understanding of karan and from him the understanding of all other children of its special needs whether it is visible or invisible thank you so much for having me over thank you manju ma'am you have been karan vee's guiding light he is so blessed to have been able to spend his impressionable years with you and karan vee's journey has been truly incredible at dps bangalore north for all the 14 years that he was there thank you i would like to welcome dr namita kumar 
who is head of outreach and communication at Opford, which is the open platform to orphan diseases that works towards improving the health outcomes of those suffering from rare or orphan diseases. Having personal experience of dealing with such a disorder, she has been working tirelessly for the well being of others and is one of the most vocal activists who has been responsible for much path breaking work in the field. Welcome, Namita. Hi, thank you so much for having me over and giving me this uh, chance to speak. Unfortunately, I can't uh, switch on my uh, video because uh, I'm in the hospital because of another patient. But uh, I will speak and hopefully that should be all right. So, yes, okay. so I'm really impressed with this theme this year of women in Dushan. Because you know, when we think of muscular dystrophy, we think that it only affects boys. But we also forget that you know the people who have to care for these children, and sometimes in some cases, girls are also affected by uh, muscular dystrophy in various forms, as I'll explain one case. So we forget the women who are involved in the care of children and adults with muscular dystrophy. So I've seen I, I myself have been a you know part of that's journey and I've seen so much. I've seen the mothers, the women actually being the strength of the children, pushing them, goading them, helping them achieve their goals, you know, just staying by their side, whether it's for their physiotherapy, whether it's for their treatment. I'm not saying that, you know, fathers don't have a role, but women have been the guiding force. So I follow this Jason's journey on Facebook and I see his mother constantly pushing him to achieve, constantly, you know, pushing him to do what he can do. As Manjo Ma'am said, you know, it's strengths based. Whatever we can do, we should be able to do. And the women in our lives have been really instrumental in pushing us to do what we can actually do. And the other thing that I wanted to speak about women in dystrophy is the fact we forget that, you know, the issues they have to face as carriers. Because I've seen this for other disorders as well, where the mother passes on the gene to the boys, whether it's hemophilia A or hemophilia B. Yeah. So there's a lot of brunt that sometimes women face as carriers. And there is a stigma out there. There are prejudices. There, you know, there's a lot of hurt feelings in the family. And women have to bear this. And it's also something, you know, that they have to, you know, reconcile that, uh, you know, I'm a carrier and this happened to my child. But that's nobody's fault. That we have to be very clear that it is absolutely nobody's fault that we are, you know, carriers. That's something that we didn't know. We can do nothing about it. We can only help our children, help the children around us. There's really, you know, it's there's no for no fault. We should not be bearing that guilt. And that's something uh, I all I want to tell all the women, you know, whatever carriers we may be whether it's any other rare disease that it's nobody's fault and we should not, and people should understand that, you know, genetics is really not in our hands. If we knew we would do something, but we didn't know. It's only now that, you know, after somebody gets tested as a tal major or sickle cell or even hemophilia, that's when, you know, our parents come to know, okay, we are carriers. It's nobody's fault. Genetics is a lottery. And so like Richard Dawkins says, the blind watchmaker, we really don't know what's in it for us. So I don't think at any point in time, a woman should be, you know, holding herself guilty because she's a carrier, because we are carriers. That's not our fault. That is absolutely not our fault. We are doing what we have to do to alleviate, you know, to help our children. And that's the main thing. And that's something that I think really all of us should be proud of. So uh, women in Dishan. So I have one case with me of a young, uh, I want to speak about her. She's a young lady. And she's from a place called Muzaffanagar in UP. And just two years ago, she this was during the pandemic that we got a reference to this uh, young lady from another person, other student in JNU. And this young lady, uh, well, we didn't know initially that it was any of the dystrophies. So she was, uh, you know, she's so from what she told us. From her year one onwards, she found it difficult. While she was crawling, she found it difficult to stand up. She found it difficult while walking, she would fall down. The similar symptoms she described to us. But being in a place like Muzaffar Nagar, it was wrongly, it's been continuously 
wrongly diagnosed as cerebral palsy or you know uh, some other muscular there there was no access to proper diagnosis first of all and so it was continuously put down as okay this is a child with cerebral palsy so at max she has only been getting some kind of physiotherapy so far and she is she is a very intelligent girl she found it a big struggle to go through education because uh, as the days went by during her school she found that you know her legs were becoming weaker and weaker and at some point in time she had to start using crutches then it uh, became she started using a walker and now she's currently uh, kind of uh, at a stage where she has to use a wheelchair so the education for her was a big struggle because she is in a small place where there's no access to proper i mean even in cities like bangalore not all schools are accessible but yeah there are a few schools great schools like dps which have done a lot but being in a place like that there was no access at all as classrooms are on the top and you know it's, it's with great difficulty that you know uh, she had to you know request her classroom to be on the ground floor so she could at least complete her schooling but having done that uh, you know becoming progressively weaker yeah. Her limbs becoming progressively weaker. She finally also managed to get a degree from a college. Uh, she's currently she's done her BSc. She's taking tuitions at home. But there was no diagnosis at all until the pandemic year when someone referred us. And then when uh, you know one of our uh, volunteers actually happened to by chance go to the place where she was for a fun hour, she noticed that uh, you know the same uh, calf muscles were bulging. and that's when you know they rang a bell that this could be one of the muscular dystrophies and then we got in touch with icib uh, you know scaria and finally we got a diagnosis of girdle dystrophy so it took almost more than 22 years for her to get a diagnosis and her journey with you as a woman, her journey has been very difficult as a girl in a small town because there are expectations which she cannot live up to which she has constantly been and she needs counseling now she's getting counseling from us but there's a burden of ex- societal expectations for her being a girl they are expecting you know there's a expectation from the society in her small town that you know the, there would have been you know that she should have been married she should have you know uh, had children so this is the burden of expectation that she has to live with but definitely she cannot do that which she has been you know struggling to reconcile you know and in a small town where there's no access to uh, real rehabilitation physiotherapy it's been a long struggle for her and added to that is this you know the family uh, you know so the family has been supportive they are also not quite sure like you know what would be the future for her she faces an uncertain future simply because our society as such you know india is a though we have very beautiful policies beautiful laws but nothing on the ground is actually implemented so to speak so we have a disability act and in the disability act muscular dystrophy is one such disability but really there has been no benefits that have actually reached the community so there's no support anywhere as in for someone who is facing an uncertain future you know there has to be some other alternative arrangement of living like you know say a disability uh, a disabled girls hostel or disabled boys hostel where they can get all the access where they can get you know an accessible space to live that's the biggest challenge because for a girl like her her brother is married moved out she uh, lives with her mother and the mother is constantly worried like after me who will support this girl so what are the alternate living arrangements for people with disabilities because for how long would our parents be around so there has to be some way of you know dealing with this when you know there is no uh, when the parents are not around so that is one uncertain future that this girl particular girl continues to face and um, of course the you know the access to education she wants to study but how would she you know come out to uh, another city so how accessible cities are how accessible hostels are if she wants to go to the city she has to find a hostel and even in a hostel like jnu it's not accessible even some of the big 
uh, places, you know, DU or uh, JNU, it's still not accessible. And what support would, you know, disability services in universities or colleges are actually dismal. They're supposed to have a, a you know, cell, you know, inclusive cell or equality cell or whatever that is supposed to provide some kind of services, but that's there only on paper. So for someone who wants to access a good education, it's really, you know, it's a real mammoth task to actually find a place which is inclusive, accessible, you know, which provides a proper living space for someone who wants to move out of the city. And within the city, she has, within the, her place, it's a small town, she has no other facilities, the colleges are not great. She cannot access it. So this is the kind of, you know, a struggle that this girl is continuing to face. And of course, a financial independence. But because she's done her PSC, she's able to take tuitions and she's managing that at home. But again, the issue of, you know, there's no social support from the government or any other agency is another very worrying issue because people, such girls like this, like, you know, if she at all, she has to go to study. She will need some kind of financial support. So, of course, her family will support whatever they can. But the government has to step in at some point and provide some kind of uh, dis the disability pension is another. Um, it's really a farce. So, a thousand rupees per month will go nowhere. She's finally, after getting, uh, you know, getting a disability certificate itself is a nuisance. Hello. I think we've lost uh, Namita here. Um, okay, we'll get back to her. Yeah. I would like to uh, introduce the next uh, speaker for the day. That's uh, Miss Marilyn Paul, who is a research scientist at Jubilant Biosis. Welcome, Marilyn, who has a demonstrated history of working in pharmaceutical research and development. She's skilled in molecular biology, protein expression, and specializes in biophysical characterization of proteins and biomolecular interactions. A graduate of the University of Cambridge, she has more than a decade of experience in molecular biology and biochemistry. Welcome, ma'am, please. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, I think uh, I'm here in my capacity, not as a researcher, and uh, I'm truly honored to be actually part of this meeting. Uh, I hope I'm audible to everyone. Yes. Yes. Uh, so uh, it is actually my honor to be in this uh, room with all of you, uh, eminent scientists who have been actually part of uh, you know research around uh, DMB. And I'm here as a lay person and uh, not as a researcher, as someone who's trying to understand. And uh, it was truly by chance uh, uh, that a friend introduced me to uh, Dr. Arun. Uh, we had a mutual acquaintance. And uh, we came and uh, were able to see the labs uh, in 2017. So it's sometime before the COVID uh, dart in Bangalore. So uh, uh, am I audible? I think my connection is dropping. In case there's an issue, do, do let me know. I'll join in by phone. Uh, so uh, in 2017, I had the fortune of actually uh, visiting the labs and actually seeing for myself and this is the first time I ever heard of Duchenne muscular dystrophy and it was so heartening to actually see a small group of scientists who very enthusiastically set up in a small lab and uh, you know everything that I, that I know from a big farmer was actually there in that small space and uh, so focused on working towards you know finding a treatment uh, that has become so unaffordable uh, and uh, probably out of reach for many uh, like the earlier speaker was mentioning even you know getting a diagnosis is such a difficulty that you know having a, a team here working to find a cure for this disease itself was amazing and the even uh, better part of knowing the story was actually seeing how collaborative this is with the parents and the families of the affected children and uh, Knowing uh, Karanvi's story and Anand and everybody around uh, working in collaboration with these scientists was so inspiring for me 
uh, and uh, you know um, that later on uh, during uh, September in uh, we actually came and actually uh, were part of an awareness program in 2017 and I volunteered so this is my story as a volunteer and not as a researcher so uh, I like any other lay person here learned for the first time that this is one of the biggest proteins that is responsible for this disease and uh, there's this complex series of um, genetic events that happens and that leads to this uh, disorder. And the novel approach um, that uh, Arun and team were fo focusing on to find a cure is in itself um, amazing. It was a new learning for me. So um, uh, I like the analogies that are used when we create awareness programs about one in 79. So seven, nine exons uh, are, uh, could be the reason why uh, DMD occurs. So they were trying to find a cure in terms of oligonucleotides and uh, to create and, and block and even make maybe make a um, incomplete protein, but still a functional one that prevents these children from uh, actually, uh, you know, getting a severe form of this disease. So uh, uh, here's my, uh, that is my learning. But uh, on the day that uh, we were part of the awareness program, we were in GKBK campus having a run a marathon, uh, 7.9 kilometers and 3.5 kilometer runs uh, to bring awareness to the fact that one out of 79 exons could be affected, which could be uh, leading to this disease or one in 3,000, almost one in 3,500 boys get affected by this. So it was uh, an amazing day, a lovely morning. And uh, Bertie, if you could actually share the screen, maybe uh, uh, they could have a look at the pictures as well. So. As you can see here, a lot of people had come in and we had participated and it felt truly like a family that, uh, you know, the team at Dart Bangalore is and, you know, everyone coming together and kudos to the uh, team working there and the volunteers on the day. Uh, we had everything from audiovisual awareness sessions to Zumba warm-ups and rollathon, pentathon, you know, everyone came out in huge numbers and actually, uh, you know, came together and it was such a happy event. And I've been part of marathons before, but I have to tell you that this was, this felt more lively than any other that I have been. And I felt like part of the crowd being there, you know, not only just learning, but actually experiencing the day and joy of that day, uh, not just creating awareness. So, uh, I am in for any challenge uh, that the team is putting out to bring more awareness. And thank you so much for today. Thank you, Marilyn, for sharing your experience and uh, reliving memories of GKVK once again with us. Got a smile on my face. Must do that again soon. I also derive immense pleasure to share that our uh, senior scientist, Bertie, was part of the NCRT team that is working on a new handbook for teachers where they have discussed inclusivity and issues pertaining to children with mental and physical issues. The handbook will be launched in 2023. So looking forward to sharing it with all of you. Now next on board, we have the Wonder Women of DART. We have Manjula who is the lifeline and Secretary of DART, Usha, who's head of the projects, Deepika and Kirti, the senior researchers, and Kushpu, the junior researcher, the women, wonder women, who would like to share their experience and thoughts with us. 
over to you ladies hi hi ma'am how are you yes yes we can yes okay i think i have some odd video issue so oh, okay <laughs> no worries no worries so i am usha keshav murthy here so essentially my field of work had been in oligonucleotide synthesis and sequencing which was more applicable towards the molecular biology nevertheless it made me very interesting to be a part of dart which is majorly about the antisense oligonucleotides and its application towards the promising therapeutic option of dmd and other neuro degenerative diseases but it's 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 very nice interacting with the whole team i have been repeating this because because i just joined two years back and i find it so nice coordinating with them and uh, having to know that okay other than the simple molecular biology something working towards the diseases has made me very interesting and i am really happy with the team and i wish them all the best to the team in fact including us the whole team flourishes well and we should be able to address many more degenerative diseases like this with the antisense oligos and since i have been a part of manufacturing also i do understand how the whole application goes and you have already heard about how the technicalities about it so i will not take you through this wishing our whole team the best i hand it over back to movin so this has been a night nice first conversation and a nice conversation thank you thank you usha thank you yes kirti thank you movin ma'am and uh, i firstly thank anand sir and arun sir for this great opportunity to work in dart so i work as cell and molecular biologist over here for 6 years so it's been great working over here um so i was very much interested in science from this childhood so then i did my masters in genetics and then um, i joined i wanted to continue in research so i joined dart so this is a very great uh, plan uh, i learned many things and especially i did my skin biopsy myself so that was the best experience over here and uh, we did over here uh, many experiments so whether the results may be the positive or the negative the encouragement is always the same and uh, um, so it's very good to work over here the environment and the people over here everything so i thank you everyone for this great opportunity and uh, uh for this opportunity thank you thank you dear thank you so much yes dipika are you there would you like to share your thoughts as well welcome dipika yes thank you ma'am i have been associated with dart for 6 years i started my career here as a fresher the work environment and culture here has made me to stay for long and will continue to do so Being a chemist, I have been involved in the preparation of small molecules for muscular dystrophy. This has given me an immense job satisfaction as I am working for dystrophy annihilation program and having a positive impact upon the same. That has given me a lot of opportunity to showcase my talents, not only in the technical domain but also in some other admin and supporting functions such as assisting physiotherapy sessions, conducting awareness programs, marathon conferences, etc., etc. I would like to thank Anand sir and Movin ma'am for their support and continuous support and it's been wonderful having you girls on board. Have we we've lost connection here? I guess I don't know. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Deepika and uh, Manjula. Have you been able to connect back? Yes. Yeah. Wonderful hearing your voice. Uh, I'm yes. I'm Moni Raju from Dart. my first introduction to dart is 2011 when mr anand started thinking to start ngo to help dmd families in 2012 dart was registered and since then i am taking care of administrative department i like to coordinate with the parents and help the children in scheduling physio and rehabilitation activities in my lifetime dart i have seen more ups and downs and how mr anand and mrs movin anand and dr arun shastri struggle to reach so far but i know we have a bright future and i am happy to be a part of it as a part of dart team i am enjoying uh, participating the, uh, in outreach activities like camps walkathons where in myself being multilingual helped a lot in counseling dmd families 
before pandemic we used to conduct various events at that which we hope we will restart soon thank you ma'am thanks a lot thank you everyone giving me opportunity to talk about this. you are truly a lifeline of dart manjula and we don't know what we would do without you loads of love and hugs yes thank you thank you, thank you. yes kushbu is the junior researcher at dart most welcome dear please we would like you to share a few thoughts as well yes kushbu uh, yes sure ma'am uh, good morning everyone um bring me as a part of the dart family uh, uh, since i joined here like it's been 3 months now uh, this i have seen that there's so much of positive energy and and there's a learning environment and i have learned like i have gained so much of valuable insights into this research field by working in dart i can confidently say that i have learned so many new things and i'm so grateful to have found the space where people uh, are so passionate about environment uh, i have also met like um, very special kids and i really salute i think we have a little connectivity issue here with kushbu it is such a wonderful yeah. experience working here and really a very positive and very friendly environment to work here thank you so much ma'am for giving me this opportunity thank you so much thank you all the wonder women of dart manjula usha deepika kirti and kushbu we are truly blessed to have you amongst us god bless yes so we are back yes we have uh, sudipta who is a psychotherapist and the founder of coffee shop counselor along with her colleague akila fadnis to share their thoughts on lockdown and its effect on the dmd kids both of them were very busy during lockdown helping many people living their lives and uh, of course going through the pandemic yes over to you sudipta and akila thank you so much uh, always grateful to be part of this Nation always happy to be here and talk about one of our passions, which is mental health awareness. Um, as the coffee shop counselor, one of our main focus is everyday mental health. So to not sort of wait for a crisis for something to happen, but just in our everyday lives, what can we do to help our kids, to help the parents, whoever is around us, just in their everyday mental health? Um, I think Akila will elaborate on this a lot more. where we don't obviously focus on the physical needs but the mental health needs of these kids and what we can do about it um akila i think you can take over yes hello akila welcome thank you uh thanks sudipta first of all i'm really really happy to be here today to listen to everyone speaking i was really happy to hear karan speaking first <laughs> it was a really good introduction and yeah like sudipta said uh and actually like dr gulati also started off saying uh, everyone we focus a lot on the physical needs of kids with special needs or disabilities and very often we don't look at the fact that yes they uh, might have some uh, limited mobility and all of that but their emotional needs their um, mental growth all of it is just like any other kid out there and that they need these addressed in the same way with the same kind of sensitivity patience that most other uh, you know young adults teenagers will require so one of the things that sudipta and i were noticing during lockdown is that a lot of us felt you know that we were cooped up inside the house there was a lot of us didn't know how to express our emotions we missed having a social network we missed having a support group that was uh, an experience that was very common to many of the clients that we spoke to during the lockdown and it made us think that this is what a lot of children with limited mobility experience right it's not just a lockdown phenomenon throughout the years from like every year they have the same uh, limited social interactions limited going out as one of the earlier speakers pointed out we have such poor accessibility in our country that it's hard for people to get you know the kind of fresh air and uh, green spaces that really help mental health so I just wanted to sensitize everyone that we've kind of experienced this now in two years of lockdown so it it's a way of really connecting with what people feel who have to go through this on a daily basis 
but beyond the immediate physical needs like we said there are things that parents can do to connect with their children to kind of get a bit creative when it comes to helping children explore the interests that they can within these confines and also very importantly for parents and the children building up a social network and support system so building to get bringing together people within the community within your family setting up networks with other uh, parents and children in similar situations and dart is doing that really well by providing this sort of center where people can come and take help from each other share ideas the children get really good social interactions so if people can do this more and more in their own personal settings as well it will be really helpful and the other thing that the coffee shop counselor also focuses a lot on is communication right like we said any parent with their child always tries to keep the child happy give the child what they want but we're saying spend a little bit of time with the child try to understand okay why do you want this how is it making you happy and go beyond just the words happy or angry or sad ask the child okay what makes you satisfied what makes you excited right all kids love being excited they want to have that excitement they want new experiences so as parents maybe sit with the child and just get them to explore their own needs why do you think you want this how will it help you and also when it comes to negative emotions india as a country we try to you know just say no 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 don't feel this way you can feel better let's do something to make you better instead of jumping in with the solution immediately for the parents and the child it's useful to sometimes just say okay you're feeling angry or sad or frustrated let's just take a few minutes why are you feeling this way right redirect it a little bit what is happening what do you think is making you feel this way what would you like to do about it so give the power back to the child now i know again that many dmd parents are really good at this because they're so used to interacting with their kids one on one and spending time with the children right but it's something that if it's a situation that you're new to you're not exactly sure how the kid wants to uh, how the kid wants to express themselves to you just leaving that path of communication open so that the child knows that they can always reach out to you when you need something and the other thing that we wanted to also specify is for caregivers that you know you also need a support system you also need people to reach out to for some support for creative ideas because for you and for your child it's not good if you're constantly with each other and trying to solve everything just by yourselves so having a support system in place is important reaching out to trained therapists could be useful for both the children and you because it also teaches the children that whatever they're going through is normal it is safe to talk about it they they should bring it up and not keep it within themselves so all of this is what we wanted to share we do know that all of these situations take a lot of time effort and money and that it's not possible for everyone to do everything but to just make us start with one of these things and primarily keep a line of communication open between you and your child so that they can share whatever they're feeling with you openly so that's what we wanted to say and the last thing i wanted to say is that there are many if you would like to speak to therapists in bangalore virtual sessions thanks to the lockdown everyone is doing virtual sessions now there are many counselors and therapists who are trained in working with children with special uh, with disabilities or limited mobility and also helping the parents with their support system so feel free to reach out to them as well it might be very helpful and wishing Thank dart you. and all the families associated with dart all the very best for all their future work because i've seen the work you do first hand and it is so fabulous and i'm so happy to be here today as part of a dart family so thank you thank you sudipta thank you akhila thank you so much yes so uh, next we have our uh, uh, wonder women moms right of the dmd warriors warm welcome to all of you i would like to uh, welcome uh, ms aruna karpur uh, mother in law ms girja karpur and her daughter ms ahana karpur welcome and uh, ahana will be uh, playing uh, sare jahan se acha on her keyboard ms girja will uh, sing a ganpati song that will be really nice auspicious and of course we'll have aruna speaking aruna uh, i have had the uh, privilege of being associated with the the karpur family since i think it's been more than a decade now and it has been a very 
wonderful support i have got we have got at dart from all of them so thank you for always being there yes over to you aruna namaste i think you are on mute uh, aruna yeah wish you happy ganesh chaturthi <laughs> namaste yes thank you miss uh, garja girja for yes. being there yes 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 uh, due to ganesh chaturthi ganesh chaturthi i am going to prayer for ganapati okay and uh, wish you good luck for dart also gananath gauri jata jay balavanta sannuta gananath gauri jata जय बलवंता सन्नुता ओ गारूप शरीरा शंखावली परिहारा संकीर्ण गुण गणहारा शुभ परिवारा सुख करा शुभ परिवार सुख करा गणनाथ गौरी जाता जय बलवंता सन्नुता जय बलवंता सन्नुता जय बलवंता सन्नुता प्रथम वंदना गौरी नंदन प्रथम वंदना गौरी नंदना हे शिव नंदन पाहि गजानना हे शिव नंदन पाहि गजानना प्रथम वंदना गौरी नंदना एक दंत गुणवंत विनायक एक दंत गुणवंत विनायक विघ्नहरण शुभ मंगलदायक प्रणव स्वरूप पाई गजानना प्रथम वंदना गौरी नंदना प्रथम वंदना प्रथम वंदना प्रथम वंदना गौरी नंदना थैंक यू थैंक यू मैम दैट वाज रियली मेलोडियस थैंक यू सो मच वेलकम अरुणा We have Amaya there yes. behind. Yes. Hi, Amaya. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm sitting there. Yes, the DMD warrior. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Welcome. Warm welcome, Aruna. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thank you for giving me this opportunity. So the theme being uh, for this year, for World Duration Awareness Day 2022, is women in duration. So. looking at the theme i got some ideas so today i would like to talk about the women who have supported amaya through amaya through his journey so who have always been there for him so when i look at the journey amaya's journey till now there have been many compassionate kind strong women behind him and i would take this opportunity to tell you all about that so first and foremost i'll begin with my family So as just now you all heard my mother in law she has been a pillar of support from the beginning and uh, my mother she has also been there thus we are lucky to have her parents around and then in the family ahana who is uh, one of his best friends and best critic critics also so who he fights a lot and they have good time along also then uh, his paternal aunt who is a doctor has always been with us in our journey in every step 
and she has constantly been there looking for ways to make his life easier and uh, the list goes along so now next coming to schooling uh, for ameya the schooling uh, was very easy like uh, because we got an angel like uh, she was uh, really a an angel for him uh, miss uh, rema nand kumar who was a former principal of samsud mount literary school she was the first one to show faith in him and give an opportunity to study uh, in the, in the school mosau samsud mount literary school and uh, she has supported him in every possible way the management and the miss madhavi from the management of samsid has always looked into that ame is comfortable at school they also built a lift for him so that he could move around easily and access the lab the computer labs science labs and the library and his teachers have played a very very major role in his life and most of them were all females all teachers they showed the motherly affection and made sure that he doesn't uh, miss anything he was included in every activity the school also gave him opportunity to represent the school in uh, the country wide the country level nazaria competition where he uh, won many awards for the school and he was also given a chance to host annual day functions this uh, boosted his uh, confidence to a much greater level now he is studying in christ junior college where he was welcomed with open hands the admission was very seamless and it is extending all the support possible for uh, ameya to be included as a very normal child and his classmates are very supportive and empathetic and one of his classmates she comes to the parking lot every day with us to make sure that he has boarded the car uh, comfortably and he is comfortably sitting in his seat not a single day she has missed and next the next family of mine that is dart family so mrs movin anand has always been a great inspiration to all the families and uh, i thank her for being that i also thank mrs manjula dr kirti deepika kushboo and uh, many others uh, so for constantly constantly working towards finding a cure for devan dmd children and uh, finally i would thank all the people who have played a vital role in ameya's life regardless of gender so i there are many other names also uh, but because uh, it is uh, women's team today so i took only these names but there are many others and thank you once again thank you all you forgot to mention how your life changed and was impacted because of amaya the real thing is he has inspired me to be a better person <laughs> i would not be so confident and doing all these things if he was not there in my life to be honest yes. i'm telling you with full honesty and how you. you became a teacher because of him your yes. life as a teacher <laughs> yes Lord, yes, yes definitely with so many children I, yes and uh, even now like uh, i have discontinued my school work but at home the kids they come and i enjoy it a lot so wow. that is uh, keeping me uh, very much uh, motivated and uh, it is like it is a stress buster for me you such a beacon of light yes. you have been really yes. a true <laughs> pillar you. of support for all of us thank here you. and that god bless thank, thank you, you. So yes welcome ahana Ahana is going to play Sare Jahan Se Acha for us. Hi, this is Ahana. I'm going to play Sare Jahan Se Acha on the keyboard today.
Yes, thank you. Next, we have another Wonder Woman mom of our DMD warrior Anirudh. This is Ms. Pradeepa Rakesh, who is working at Standard Chartered. Her son Anirudh, of course, suffers from DMD, and she has been an integral part of Darts Awareness Program. Welcome, Pradeepa. Please do join us and share your thoughts. Lost connection. Okay. Um, most welcome, uh, Mrinalini. She is uh, a pillar of support and a friend and guide to her brother Rishi, who suffers from DMD. She's another wonder girl of our uh, DMD family, Dart family. Welcome, Rinalini. Please do come online and share your thoughts. Yes. Hello. Hi. Am I audible? Yes. Okay. Love your um, smile. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for letting us uh, talk, talk about our experiences. Um, in terms of like, I don't know any, I don't have any scientific knowledge about muscular dystrophy, but if I talk about it in like just day-to-day -day life, then um, initially it was hard for us to cope with uh, understanding, cope and to understand how Rishi, my brother who has muscular dystrophy functions or just what he would be comfortable with because we had no prior knowledge about this rare disease and it was our first time encountering something like this. So for us to really fail, come to terms with it was hard and difficult, but I think over the over the span of uh, uh, 14 years, uh, we have learned to adapt to different situations concerning him. And now it has become a part of our lifestyle. It has not uh, really affected us in a negative way. In fact, we are so proud of him because he knows what his limits are and he knows what he wants to do. He knows what he cannot do. Physically, he's not as strong, but he makes sure that he utilizes the, the mental abilities that, that he has. He loves to study. He loves drawing he he tries to explore these fields and to see him just um grow in these fields is is so it, it's fascinating because in a way he has inspired me as well to um really passionately follow what i what i do and what i study and what i believe in um just simple simply put it has initially it was a problem and now when we think of it, it has become a part of our lifestyle and it has never, it has never been a major issue, but just simple things like traveling or just um, going um, to restaurants. Sometimes these, uh, sometimes sort of, like some restaurants do not even have a ramp, which honestly it's, it's not something Rishi would care about because um, he's autistic and he cannot verbalize most of the things that he feels. But as family members, it feels we feel disheartened just looking at the situation like so or encountering something like that. But um, we have learned to deal with it in a very positive way, and we really and we are really proud of what he has done till now. What and to uh, and to help just um, to help with a family member like so with someone who has muscular dystrophy you need very supportive family members and luckily my parents are extremely supportive we all all of us we work um, towards taking care of rishi and making sure that he is he does not feel discomfort in at any point so in that sense uh, having strong like a very strong support system is very important so yeah, yeah um, it's in in conclusion, it's not a big issue, but we because we have dealt with it in a very positive manner. So nice. that's that's nice. amazing. So thank you so much for letting us share the our experience. It feels great. Oh, great, Minarli. Thank you, Punam. Uh, would you like to share in uh, Hindi? Actually, a lot of uh, people would like to hear something in Hindi as well. So Hindi. <laughs> Ha, ha, but, please, that will be yeah, wonderful. But dealing with positive mindset, 
बट थैंक्स टू यू ना आप नहीं आपकी वजह से देखो ऋषि ने कितना कितना अचीव किया है है ना मतलब यू हैव वर्क सो हार्ड इतनी मेहनत की है तो बहुत अच्छा लगता है ऐसे तो हम मदर्स ही हैं इट सो हैट्स ऑफ यू प्राउड ऑफ यू एंड थैंक यू फॉर ऑलवेज बीइंग सच अ पिलर ऑफ सपोर्ट है ना दैट वुड हैव बीन नथिंग विदाउट यू हितेश भाई एंड एवरीबडी यस थैंक यू लव यू लोड थैंक यू यस थैंक यू यस ओके वी कुड शेयर प्रॉब्ली द वीडियो बाइट्स from the wonder women yeah of that who have been an important part of that and now they have moved on with their lives and gone off to various parts of the world yes bati please do that thank you hi i'm shika sebastian i'm an engineer at janssen biologics in 2016 i did an internship at distrophin alignation research trust or dart and this experience taught me so much about the disease and really it was so amazing to see the research that dart does and the kind of effort they put into making patients lives better on a day to day basis i hope to see the cure for this disease in my lifetime good morning everyone my name is sharanya and i'd like to talk about my experience at dart uh, i discovered dart through my cousin uh, who has back muscular dystrophy and i went on to intern with them during the summer of 2018 It was a fantastic learning experience. I learned about the exon skipping treatments, uh working in the cell culture lab, um a lot of fun facts from Bertie and a lot of trivia about science and fiction. So all in all it was a great experience. In addition to all of that, I also was able to assist physiotherapy sessions, uh interact with patients and families. I am training to be a genetic counselor. and i'm hopeful that i can also support families whose kids um have genetic conditions um i'm looking forward to seeing more affordable therapies for dmd in the future and hopefully being um part of the fight against dmd hello all i am arya petkar today i'll be playing a song a hum honge kamyab on the keyboard the view <laughs> look here the lady amaya is touching the cat fantastic
Yes, so those were that was Arya Petkar, sister of Amog Petkar, who's also one of the DMD warriors. And they have uh, their parents, uh, Nisha and Nagraj Petkar, have been a very, very invaluable um, part of DART and have been a great support. Thank you. And of course, uh, we had Ameya Karpur there in the pool and cutting the cake. So, yes, thank you so much, all of you, for being a part of the event today. Now I would like to open the uh, screen, share the screen, and we would invite a few questions, yeah? Participants who would like to share their views. Uh, very good morning to everyone. Uh, I don't know how, how to say, what to say, but uh, in my life, this is my first platform that I'm speaking something. Uh, means after hearing everything, thing uh, what was it in today's program uh, i ha i just want to add something that uh, what uh, gulati ma'am said and what manju ma'am uh, said and that uh, few ma'ams of that coffee team uh, i uh, i was so uh, emotional hearing everything and all these things so i can't uh, recognize their names and everything. I will not take much of your time, but I would like to say that the emotional things, the emotional support from the school, from uh, the friends of uh, uh, the kid, uh, it's very much important. And I want uh, the school uh, to encourage the friends and uh, the, uh, the person who are in the group to take care to encourage so that their motivation should not go down uh, it's just like that so nothing of much but uh, the today's session uh, i i got many much motivation uh, to fight again to set uh, to uh, uh, hear the stories that how everyone is dealing the st uh, their struggle and how dart has helped everyone so, uh, so maybe some program or the way you did today a uh, virtual program. So maybe some virtual program for the schools. My son is in uh, class five. He is in Birla High School, Mukundapur. I am uh, I am presently in Kolkata. So uh, the school, the principal, ma'am, she has supported us very much. Uh, indeed, uh, means like I am very blessed that I put my child there. Uh, they have a ramp there already everything is provided there the school is perfectly fit for my son uh, he is in class 5 is not that big so and the two years of pandemic uh, he it's a it's a sudden uh, before going to school he was uh, means before the pandemic when he was going to school he was walking and now he is on wheelchair so it's a great drastic mental change in his life so i hope uh, what the scientists are doing, what the doctors are doing, they are doing. As a mother, uh, just I, we need the emotional support. I'm having the support from my family and I'm blessed that my parents, my in-laws, my husband, everybody, my child is also very supportive. He encourages me. So I will not take much of your time, but thanks to to the Anand family, thanks to Karanveer, uh, seeing you, I get, I will, my husband is not here, I will show your recordings to you, uh, we, I am detached, there are many things going on Facebook, you can join, I, today, just I joined, and I'm, I'm feeling really happy that, why I have not joined you people before, to see you fighting, everyone listening their stories, that some people are not getting the mental support also, what what medicine is doing that will come tomorrow whenever it is coming but we have to fight today to pick the child up from the chair to take him to the washroom to make him bath to take him to the school every day every struggle it's really hard and if some mental support is there it's really helpful mostly for in the school for the child if your child is happy you are happy I hope it's for every mother and every mother wants to give the best to the child. So nothing more, ma'am. Uh, 
it's just a story but i took um, more of your time but uh, i don't know how to frame sentences uh, i don't know what to say uh, as i said uh, it's my first time in my life not not in even school not in even college never i was just an introvert i never spoke a single word uh, word in front of a mic but today i am here i by seeing the program by listening to stories it motivated me uh, so i am here with uh, uh, no words but thank you for ar arranging all these things uh, thank you no nothing more i can say just it's my feelings if you could see it's it's like that if you could feel it's it's just nothing more than that ma'am nothing more i can say i don't have words okay and thank you and have thank a good day to all of you listening me and uh, oh, yes thank you okay. so much ishita uh, ishit for sharing your uh, feelings with us and truly you can reach out we are all here together in this and uh, believe me even i am comparing this show for the first time so i was also a bunch of nerves and uh, dirty pushed bertie pushed <laughs> it's okay you know he's like that was a no. freudian slip right <laughs> that <laughs> was a freudian slip <laughs> and and bertie pushed me no it is a women day it's a wonder women day in dishen you have to do it you have to do it so here i am with all my you know errors and mistakes <laughs> that i'm making so yeah thank you so much अब डॉक्टर शिफाली अब हमारे साथ हैं आप किसी को भी कुछ सवाल पूछने हैं तो प्लीज बेफिक्र होके पूछिए थैंक यू मोनिका मेहता वांटेड टू से समथिंग हां या हाय मैम हाय एवरीवन एक्चुअली आई एम नॉट एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड द क्वेश्चंस ही स्टार्टेड आस्किंग माय सन इज ओनली 6 इयर्स ओल्ड एंड ही आस्क्ड टू मेनी क्वेश्चंस अराउंड व्हाई आई एम नॉट एबल टू डू दैट शुड आई टेल हिम एवरीथिंग Or should I stop myself? I I don't know what to say and how to say. कब तक चलेगा मेरे साथ मम्मा ये? I can't even describe what feelings I go through every day. <laughs> Sorry. Na na, we are in it together. Don't worry. As a parent, I would say be strong and don't lose heart. And uh, he's a blessing for you. And uh, you have a direction in your life. Yes, he is a and, blessing, and you but, must uh, tell him as a parent, be strong and tell him, don't worry, you are different, but you are no less. He asked me why I am different. I say that Bhagwan Ji is blessed. Yeah, yes, yeah. that's all. I yes, just say that he is my blessing. Yeah, you can do yes. everything you want. So yes. Just the, like Mam shared that he can't go to the ground, play ground. We are very scared. So I make him divert by saying you start drawing or do everything you want to do, but at the end I have a guilt feeling. Why? Up Why? You can go with him to the ground, hold his hand, do everything that he wants to do. Even with Karan, it was the same thing. We used to just hold his hand. सब कुछ कराते थे. Slide के ऊपर भी चढ़ाते थे. हाथ पकड़ के पूरा slide से नीचे लाते थे. And we used to make him sit in the sand, खेलो. उठने में मुश्किल होते थे. We used to be around to just be there. enjoy the moment that you have right now with him forget about no. the future definitely something will come out that's the positive attitude we have to have no matter no. what no matter it what it is coming yeah it. you are we working out it. and we have to you fight you will it. do it yeah we will do we'll it do. yes we will yeah do. we will do we it. in any case medicine together. will come and we yes. will do it yes we will thank do you so much. that is what thank, thank you god thank bless you. good morning uh, although this is uh, all about wonder women but uh, the disease of my child uh, made me join this and i am thankful to dr shastri who has uh, provided me with this opportunity uh, i just want to ask that my child is uh, just two and half years old so shall i start with uh, steroids and all that for medication or shall i wait for some more time Mm, doctor arun would like to speak on that or you can I contact the doctor shifali can answer doctor shifali can answer this okay okay yeah please doctor shifali professor shifali please okay uh, uh can i just add to the previous one actually that's why i raised my hand uh, you know uh, telling them blessing maybe it's okay for small children okay 
and they also understand it's not a blessing it's a challenge i learned it the hard way from one of my patients you know i generally try to prognosticate parents first not in front of the child i used to send the child away i mean initially obviously yes but you know then the father told me ki usne net mein se already pad liya hai sab kuch you know so i mean you know i i i i just feel that you know we have to be involved but in a graded manner i i, I mean uh, sending them ki you know we are trying to tell ki blessing hai it's a challenge yes so i mean i always try to tell them that you know everybody has different problems and all you know in life and some you know so this is one of the problems and it's okay if you can't play that's okay there is other way to do it means instead of just telling them ki blessing hai just tell ki this is a condition there are different people having different conditions kisi ko diabetes hoti hai roz injection lagana hai bachcho mein bhi hoti hai na we have children no they you know what they come into dk wo log kha lete hain chupke mithai so then we tell the parents ki usko stevia wagaira dal ke dal ke banao so what i meant was ki they are intelligent you know the children are intelligent and uh, see as i mentioned you 30% only have thoda sa kam iq they are very brilliant people you know so i just felt ki graded manner mein bachche ko bhi batana hai slowly prognosis ko end mein and just tell them ki it is a condition and kisi ko blood pressure hai kisi ko you know hypertension hota hai kisi ko sugar is like this and kisi ko seizure hota hai something like that and tell them that it's a challenge it's okay and one thing very important was you are no less everybody is different five fingers are different right so everybody has glass is not full kuch kuch problem hoti hai so this is one of the problems and we have to circumvent abhi treatments are coming and then everything is going to improve give them hope give them that but only thing is na unko samajh aa jata hai you know we are telling them blessing chote bachche ke liye theek hai thoda sa bachcha bada hoga na wo khud hi dekh you know start reading and another thing i i also feel you know which i not only for dmd and each person challenge you know yeah in the sense in the days i think it's very important jo aap school ko kara rahe na school mein there has to be empowerment of the teachers as well as the children they have to understand that you know they are no less it is just that you know just there is a challenge which is there in somebody and it can be with anybody nobody understands see i can have an accident while going back home i can get into a wheelchair you know they don't understand we have to understand it's a challenge and move on and and uh, sir regarding the treatment na standard of care steroids hai pehle you know you used to say 5 saal ke baad denge and all types you know wait kar lo plateau phase ho jaye par abhi no we uh, we have to start and even those people it has been shown ki less than 5 years mein jab start hota hai their outcome is better and in any case when all these newer advanced therapies are being done na so you have to continue them with steroids they have their own role up two and a half years mein aapne uh, abhi it's been picked up so i mean generally speaking wo shuru mein sare vaccination wagaira ho jaye so maybe you know by you know uh, we have to individualize it's not written anywhere but i would like to start it by 4 o'clock 4 or so pehle wo shuru ke immunizations wagaira sab ho jaye hai na so you will start it at 4 uh, i mean around 4 or so that would be do and sir one thing is there we we'll have to ensure ki baki monitoring and showing dare regularly taki side effects wagaira ka uh, to be seen and i i mean only thing i i i learned it you know from my patient only ki father ne baad mein bola ko net se pad liya hai so then i thought ki you know we'll have to slowly you know i'll have to keep the children in counseling but not the first time i saw us then repeated visits when you have the confidence and all but motivating them and telling them that you are no less but simultaneously it is important to tell in the school school may be clear hona chahiye so that you know they don't have any negative feeling about their because uh, another thing i tell the parents also dekho if you we were in school na to there were some people who were always you know you know ro ro ke pass hote the and there are some people who toppers hai aur mostly baki beech wale hai right so you are accepting all of them right है ना तो इसके अंदर देर इज अ फिजिकल चैलेंज विच इज कम विच इज नॉट बिकॉज ऑफ आर चॉइस इट्स नॉट बिकॉज ऑफ आर फॉल्ट सो आई मीन सो देन दैट इज टू बी टेकन एज अ स्पेक्ट्रम इन एन यू नो एज अ स्पेक्ट्रम इन अटी एंड हैज टू बी गिवन ड्यू रिस्पेक्ट एम्पथी नो सिंपथी बट एज आई ऑल्सो मैंशन अ कंडीशन बिकम्स अ डिसेबिलिटी इफ योर इन्वायरमेंट बोथ फिजिकल एंड इमोशनल अराउंड यू एंड इज देयर तो मतलब वो तो उनको दी हैव टू मेक इट फिजिकली फ्रेंडली एंड सेकेंडली आई आई वॉन्ट ऑल द डिस्टिकेशन हैज टू टेक प्लेस एंड एम्पथी एंड ह्यूमैनिस्टिक एस्पेक्ट दिस आई एम राइट टू पुट इट अक्रॉस टू एवरीबडी ट्राइंग टू गेट द मीडिया इन्वॉल्व एंड ऑल दिस इज इम्पोर्टेंट यू नो 
you know, if you take your child with any challenge abroad, huh? in abro- abroad, generally attitude hai na, ki everybody will be supported, wheelchair ko hila dega, support kar dega, you know, generally speaking, you may have bad experiences also, but what I mean, the general public has a feeling ki ha, there is a special needs situation and it is nobody's fault. Abhi idhar jane ko, abhi ye to physical uh, issue hai. You know, you have autism and you have some patients of BMD with autism. I also have, but otherwise autism and other behavioral who will behave in a, you know, in their own way in the public places. The no, lack of support, lack of empathy, the negative way these people look at the children is very bad. So I tell all my parents that if you're not getting support and anybody is looking down upon your child, you please don't explain anybody and you don't have any business to have cry because of anybody. They are not worth it. You want to cry on your own for if you're tired and exhausted with the challenge, you do that. But if anybody is looking at you in a negative way you are not supposed to cry because they are not worthy if they don't understand the life's challenges so it's very important to have a destigmatization and people to understand where these problems you know thank you professor kishpali thank you sir um we are staying at uh, uh, telangana so i have one uh, uh my child is uh, now 10 years old he is studying in fourth class uh, we are facing many problems sir from his uh, studies uh at uh, childhood he we joined a, at a, a english medium school here uh, there uh, there uh, stairs are very high highly so we changed at after four years to another school now he is studying in fourth class we we went to school that uh, states are uh, uh, small but uh, the teaching staff and uh, uh, students are behaving very bad with my uh, son uh, he daily complaining on his students and like friends nobody is supporting his, his him and he don't want to go to school so we are very hurtful and we are we are daily going physiotherapy and there is no medicine to my child we are trying to get him well sir please understand my situation and try to main ye chahta hu hamara bachcha ek jawan banna chahta hai ye desh ko inka bahut bahut seva karna chahta hai iska iska ye chhota bachpan se hi इनका आ, उसमें इनमें माइंड में हो गया मैं क्या करूं मैं तो इनको अच्छा फूड दे रहा हूं डेली एक्सरसाइज कर रहा हूं फिजियोथेरेपी करा रहा हूं बहुत पर सोच क्या बोलते ये समाज में तो ना इनको बहुत आ, अलग अलग से देख रहे हैं यू नो बैठ ना उठने में बहुत परेशानी हो रहे सीधे से देखने में तो अच्छा रहता एक बार उठो तो ये 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 प्रॉब्लम्स कितने देर रहे ना बोल के अभी मैं स्कूल नहीं जाता हूँ अब बोल के ऐसा बोल रहे एक बार देखी प्लीज ही इज सन ही इज विश्वजीत बट सोसाइटी नॉट अंडरस्टैंड our situation please dr arun sir shared this information to me that's why we are no problem uh, sir we are here and uh, any kind of support we'll take this uh, offline and uh, we'll uh, talk to you and uh, counsel yes and uh, this is for the sake of all our children we have to make the school aware and uh, we have to make the children aware who are with our dmd kids 
to support them and awareness is very important here awareness plays a very important role so uh, with this um, i think we'll uh, just um, uh, stop it here and uh, if any questions you can definitely contact us offline it will be good to do that and we shall uh, share uh, everything with you at that time right oh oh i think dr shifali think dr. wants shifali to say something hand. dr shifali wants to professor shifali yeah. please please go ahead thank you thank you yeah i want to uh, request we are not supposed to suffer and we are not supposed to just uh, you know uh, i can't start my video sorry uh, there is some network issue huh? uh, no problem. sorry no problem. Uh, yeah. we can hear so, you yeah 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 so actually i see ki if we are suffering and crying and not sending a child to school is not right and you have to stand up i request you you can take my email from dr arun or i can put it on the whatsapp on this chat you please email to me and you please mention the school and mention the problem right i will take it to the ministry i'll forward it and ask them and they may talk directly to the school or from through calcutta whatever and i also have my friends in calcutta whether they know somebody in the school see we keep talking big big things right we do talk but the point is everybody says we don't do discrimination we are very good we are very good until unless an issue is individually flagged you cannot say otherwise when you go and have a webinar or you will have a training hanji hanji we are all very nice and i'm saying it again a medical condition because of the disability because of the environment around which is not only physical but human environment so i think we have to fight against it we can't wait they are not changing they are not changing example dena hai they have you know they have been bureaucrats who they uh, there was some bureaucrat whose the child grandchild was having problem in school i told her ma'am you please write a mail to me only then can i forward it to the disability commissioner and then only i can get things done but they decided to move to another school which was wrong and i told her it's wrong when you being a bureaucrat is taking it and not you know putting it you have to write and you know we are not supposed to cry we have problems we are going to you know i mean and din ke samne to mat ja ke rona school mein please they are not worthy of it i don't want it to happen and one thing more anybody having problems and no does have to plead anybody it is your right you understand it is your right for everything it is an equal right it is a fundamental right you are in the society i don't think this pleading thing has to be there it's a right and we have to talk like this it is not our fault that if our child has any problem and please sir you plead to me and we have to we are not penalizing them we are trying to make them understand na to ek ek karke hi hoga webinars mein to hoga hi hoga hai na so it is very very important na aur hame chup nahi rehna hai hum kisi ke against uska usko koi unko hum reprimand nahi kara rahe unko bas jo nazar nahi aa raha wo dikhane ki koshish kar rahe hai uske baad bhi shayad samjhe shayad na samjhe par chote chote effort to kar hi sakte hai na par ek hai ki hamari jo whatever we are suffering i don't think and these people who don't understand we are supposed to cry in front of them we can cry amongst uh, our own close group who understand and wo jo uh, it is i mean and wo aapne school change kiya usne wo nahi banaya tha wo stairs thi wo bhi galat thi unko bolna chahiye tha ki ground floor mein rakhe aur baad mein they should have lift agar wo puri lift nahi kar sakte na they should have that wo lift jisme ek see ek wheelchair upar ja sakte you know they can't put it they are always out we have to get the infrastructure change it's not only about dushin there all other fellow other disabilities who have same problem i think we have to fight and stand up for the cause Our, a small child na mother feeds the child only when the child cries right so we have to raise a flag we have to raise our issue na and only the voice may be heard sorry i mean i that's how i feel it maybe it's wrong no not at all professor shifali that is absolutely right you've spoken from the heart and we all feel the same thank you thank you thank you so much yes um over to kirti who will uh, share a vote of thanks yes we'll give a vote of thanks now Uh, it is my honor and pleasure to thank everyone who has taken their time to be part of this memorable occasion firstly thanks to mr anand sir mrs uh, moven ma'am and karan for starting and being the inspiration for dart i would like to thank the following people for their invaluable time uh, dr shifali gulati dr geetika pant mrs manju bala subramanian dr uh, namita mallor and ms morlin paul uh, thank you all Uh, then i would like to thank uh, wonderful colleagues at dart manju ma'am usha ma'am deepika and kushbu 
thank you to Akhila and Sudipta of Coffee Shop Counselor. A huge thanks for all the amazing uh, families who shared with us, uh, Mrs. Gireja, Mrs. Aruna, and uh, her daughter Ahana Karpur, and uh, Mrs. Poonam Chauhan and uh, her daughter uh, Mrulanini Chauhan. It was nice to see our old friends Sharanya Ayer and Shika Sebastian and uh, Arya's video. And uh, finally, thanks for all those who attended. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Shifali's uh, email ID has been uh, shared in the link. So please kindly feel free to contact her. And Dr. Arun Shastri is there at DART. Please feel free. I'm sure many of you would have, uh, would have a lot of questions to ask. So thank you, one and all. Thank you for being a part of the Wonder Women Dushan special. Thank you.